Michigan State football has had its ups and downs during this past decade, and at their peak, they're in the college football playoff, and at their lowest, they had only won three games. They're in a rebuild mode with Mel Tucker at the helm, and he has to figure out who his quarterback is going to be. When you think of the big-time quarterbacks that have come through Michigan State this past decade, guys like Connor Cook and Kirk Cousins immediately come to mind, but there's one guy who is pretty much forgotten amongst the college football world. When you look at Michigan State's all-time statistics, he is basically top five in every single passing category, and just no one really ever talks about the guy. In today's video, we're going to talk about his story, his forgotten Michigan State career, and what would ultimately happen to him. So without further ado, let's get started. You're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and as a matter of fact, it is Brian Lewerke. So in today's video, we're going to talk about his rise, his Michigan State career, and before we can talk about what happened to him, we need to go back in time and see how he became a big time player to begin with. Brian Lewerke was born in Tacoma, Washington, and obviously was a big fan of football from a young age. His family would finally move in sixth grade when his parents would decide to move the family to Phoenix, Arizona. They ended up settling in a suburb of the area, and he went to a high school that produces some good quarterbacks. A guy named Spencer Rattler, who you're more than likely familiar with, was one of the quarterbacks following Lewerke. Going into his junior year, he had not yet started a game, and as he was preparing to be the head man, he finally realized college football could become a reality for him. The summer before his junior year at Pinnacle High School, he received his first scholarship offer from Arizona State head coach Todd Graham, and the fact that he could be going to a Pac-12 program in his backyard was pretty enticing to him. Michigan State would also become a huge factor. He was born and raised in Phoenix, a place that has a consistently warm climate with cactus and desert. It's pretty different from the cold, harsh winters of Michigan. He didn't grow up a Spartans fan by any means, but when the program reached new heights in 2013, he was sold. In case you didn't know, Michigan State went 13-1 and and won the Rose Bowl. It changed his view of the program, and he really started to consider him when their quarterback's coach would offer him. For a while, he was not considering Michigan State that much, though, as the Spartans already had a guy in their 2015 class by the name of Jairu Campbell. That guy would run into legal problems, though, and this would pave the path for Lewerke to become a Spartan. Luckily, Lewerke had not committed to Arizona State at the time, and they would still be able to get their hands on him. As I just said, Michigan State originally already had a quarterback in that class signed, but so did Arizona State. A guy by the name of Bryce Perkins was signed to be a Sun Devil, and in case you don't know him, he is one of the most inspiring stories in college football history and was a record-setting quarterback for Virginia. He said it didn't really deter him that much, but Michigan State was the school for him. He decided to commit to Michigan State in the April before his senior year, saying, quote, I felt like it was the right place. I like the city. I like the coaching staff. They seem really easy to talk with. They know their football, and the coaches and the facilities are really nice. His parents said they also knew he was going to choose Michigan State only 10 minutes into his initial visit with the school. Lewerke ended up committing to the Spartans over the likes of UCLA, Ole Miss, Florida, and Arizona State, but the Sun Devils were the only real competition for his talents. He started to blow up a little bit more, and one scout had this to say, quote, I thought he was one of the biggest sleepers in the country. Him and the quarterback going to Arizona State, Brady White, are two of the best on the West Coast. So yeah, as I just said, Brady White also ultimately flipped his commitment to Arizona State, who in case you don't know who he is, was a four-star recruit in that class and ended up being a star quarterback at Memphis. Lewerke completed 57% of his passes for more than 2,700 yards and 36 touchdowns, while also rushing for more than 900 yards and 10 touchdowns on the ground, and he had blossomed into a really good player. He'd also spent time with both Connor Cook and Bryce Petty in the offseason, and despite all that, his recruiting ranking was not where many people expected it. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a high three-star recruit, the number 16 pro-style quarterback, and the 390th best player in the class of 2015. Following in the footsteps of Kirk Cousins and Connor Cook, Lewerke was ready to be the next great Michigan State quarterback. We are going to start out the Brian Lewerke Michigan State era with a quote from Mark D'Antonio. Brian Lewerke really compares very favorably with Kirk Cousins in a lot of ways, and really Connor Cook. He apparently said this at Big Ten Media Days, and he had a lot of hype going into his career. After redshirting for a year, he'd be thrown into a quarterback battle with Tyler O'Connor and Damian Terry. After winning their first two games, including a win over Notre Dame, the season would fall apart pretty quickly. He'd make his first career start against Northwestern as he'd go 12 of 19 for 99 yards and a touchdown. He would start once again against Maryland and Michigan, but in that Michigan game, he would end up breaking his leg and he was done for the season. He finished his freshman campaign with 381 yards, two touchdowns, and one pick. And the Michigan State Spartans would lose nine of their last 10 games to finish with a 3-9 record, and it was one of the worst seasons in a long time. His parents were not discouraged as they knew that Michigan State football was just having one bad year, and they knew their son was in the right position to succeed. Going into 2017, Lewerke was the full-fledged starter, and in week one against Bowling Green, he'd show his potential 
as he combined for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. He'd have his first test against Notre Dame, and while he nearly threw for almost 400 yards and two touchdowns, they lost that game. He'd get his first career Big Ten win against Iowa, and would have his best game of the 2017 season in a three-overtime loss to Northwestern, as he'd throw for nearly 500 yards and four touchdowns. He'd play very poorly against Ohio State, but would lead them to a win over number seven Penn State. He would finish the 2017 season with wins over Maryland and Rutgers, and they had now been led to the Holiday Bowl. As a fun fact, the family actually went to every single game that year, and they had traveled over 45,000 miles during the 2017 season. Thankfully, they were close to home as San Diego was only a five hour drive, and he'd throw for 213 yards and three touchdowns as they would beat number 18 Washington State 42 to 17. Lowerke would finish his first year as a starter by passing for 2,793 yards, 20 touchdowns, and rushing for five more on the ground. Expectations were pretty high on him going into the 2018 season, and after a quick win over Utah State, he'd play against that school that he almost went to. Arizona State would kick a game-winning field goal and beat the Spartans 16 to 13. Lowerke would bounce back by beating Indiana and Central Michigan before they'd play the eventual Big Ten West winners, Northwestern. He'd throw for nearly 350 yards, but they would lose that game. From there, he had one of the more iconic games of his career, as he would lead them down the field, throw a game-winning touchdown pass to Felton Davis, and they would upset Penn State, who was ranked number 8, for the second straight year. Unfortunately, he would be hit with a setback. The following week, he played injured against Michigan and went 5 for 25 in that game. He would be ruled out for the following week's contest against Purdue, and the Boilermakers were coming off that thrashing of Ohio State. Rocky Lombardi would come in and lead them to a win, and Lewerke would resume his starting duties against Maryland. The injury was obviously affecting him, as he didn't play too great the rest of the year, and only appeared in one snap against Rutgers. They would go to the Red Box Bowl, where he would once again be the starter, but in one of the weirdest bowl games ever, they lost 7-6 to the Duck. This season was a little bit disappointing, but he did battle an injury, and he still managed to pass for 2,040 yards, 8 touchdowns, and a terribly disappointing 11 interceptions. According to some people, the 2019 Michigan State team was a threat to win the Big Ten, and Lewerke had high expectations. After beating Tulsa, he'd live up to his potential as he'd throw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns in a win over Western Michigan. Unfortunately, Arizona State would get the best of him for the second straight year, and this kind of halted some of the team's momentum. He threw for three touchdowns and a win over Northwestern, and would follow that up with three more in a win against Indiana. The Spartans were 4-1 going into their showdown with Ohio State, and this would be a nationally televised game. He'd finally have a chance to have his best career night, but unfortunately he would not play well against Ohio State or Wisconsin or Penn State, as they would drop all three of these games to top 10 opponents. Now they were 4-4 four and four and the season was falling apart. Things didn't get any better as they led up one of the biggest comebacks in college football history to Illinois, and they lost that game 37-34. You also cannot fail to mention Lewerke threw three picks in that game. In his final outing against Michigan, they get blown out, and he would throw more interceptions than touchdowns. To finish his Michigan State career, he would have a bounce back performance as they would beat Rutgers 27 to nothing, and he'd throw for nearly 400 yards against Maryland. In the final game of his career against Wake Forest and the Pinstripe Bowl, he would account for 320 yards and two touchdowns, and that was it for him. He'd finish his senior season with a career-high 3,079 yards, 17 touchdowns, but still an absurdly high 13 picks. Believe it or not, he broke the single game record for most yards in a game twice, finished fourth all-time in passing touchdowns, second in single game touchdowns, fourth in all-time passing yards, and fifth in single season passing yards. Besides two wins over Penn State, Lorke did not do a whole lot. He was the definition of an average starter, and at times he looked pretty bad. He will go down as a forgotten Michigan State quarterback, who I think was the beneficiary of modern football's inflated stats. From there, many did not expect him to be drafted, and that would come true. Despite not getting picked though, he would be signed by the New England Patriots as an undrafted free agent. He would battle through camp before in late July he was waived. He never played a snap in the NFL, and as of 2021, he is signed with the Alphas of the Spring League. Many like to blame Brian Lewerke for the struggles and say he was terrible, but I'm going to make an argument that he wasn't as bad as you'd think. He'd injured his throwing shoulder his junior year, and that really messed up that season. He was behind a very inexperienced offensive line, and according to Pro Football Focus, his teammates dropped a lot of passes, which totaled 36 drops. Everyone blamed Lewerke, though, and he had this to say. Quote, I definitely have tougher skin. That's one of my selling points about myself, is I have been through a lot of stuff. I've had adversity. I know what that feels like. 
he would be the last quarterback to ever start for Mark D'Antonio, and at the beginning of his Michigan State career, he was seen as someone who could go down as one of the best to ever do it. Unfortunately, the injuries, the drops, the offensive line, the culture at Michigan State, and just his inability to get that much better would ultimately lead him to becoming one of the most average starting quarterbacks you can possibly think of. Obviously, Bill Belichick saw something in him to sign him, and it means a lot to be recognized by the Patriots, but he never got a shot, and I don't think he ever will in the NFL. Lewerke is the forgotten Michigan State quarterback of this century, is most likely the most overrated quarterback in Michigan State history, and will be one of the more polarizing subjects amongst that fan base. What do you guys think though? What do you think of Lewerke? Do you think he was good or bad? And how do you think Mel Tucker will do this upcoming season? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section. Hit that like button if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know what player I should do next. And be sure to check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.